again tonight. Looking forward to what God is going to do in this service. And uh, I believe the Lord is going to do some great and mighty things. Amen. In this service tonight. Hallelujah. I am uh, believing God in these last days. I believe we're living in the last days. And I'm going to believe God, amen, for pouring out of His Spirit in these last days. It's going to take some work on our part. Amen. We're going to have to do uh, some due diligence in order to obtain what God has for us. But I believe that there is a group of people right now all across this world, they're going to make that effort. They're going to do the praying. They're going to do that uh, push inside their life in order to see the power of God in this last day. And I pray tonight that it starts during this difficult time that we're going through with this virus. I pray that people would get motivated to reach out in prayer that people would get motivated, amen, to seek the face of God, to fast, and to get a hold of old time power, amen. And I believe that as we do that, I believe that God will do His part. But it starts, it always starts with us doing ours. And so that's what we can do tonight. Get in there. Let's see what God will do, amen. Uh, at the, as we start this service here tonight, just a few things by way of announcement. I don't know, for those of you that are listening, that are gospel light, tabernacle, uh, faithful folks, uh, I am uh, not sure tonight if we're going to uh, um, be able to even be allowed in service. I know that uh, me and Brother Tim will be talking and we'll have that conversation this week. Uh, and uh, we'll be letting you know, uh, uh, those that may be listening, posting it out there for you to find out. Amen. But let's keep that in prayer tonight. Amen. And uh, we're going to do our best to keep bringing services out to you and uh, broadcasting them out if we're not if we're not able to come together if we do come together put your shouting shoes on amen let's come to the house of god get a testimony i mean get a testimony together and ready and uh, let's get back together whenever that is let's get back together let's just worship god and uh, if you've got stuff planned just push it out of the way we're going to have church amen whatever that is i can promise you that. Amen. But until then, we're going to have church remotely. And, and uh, thank you again for listening. And uh, as I mentioned earlier this morning, we're going to be doing communion after the message tonight. And uh, I know it's a little bit different. Normally you're in a church setting, probably never done it in your house before. Amen. But I want you to try to find something that you can use to celebrate communion with us. And uh, we're not we're not asking you to drink the Kool-Aid tonight, but if Kool-Aid's all you got, then use Kool-Aid, all right? Uh, we're, this evening, if you've got some grape juice, that would be great. If you don't, find something. And uh, it's I'm not trying. We're not trying to be frivolous here. We're not trying to be uh, flippant here, or, or you know, take find something. We're going to celebrate what God has done, and uh, I want it to be a special time. And so, if you've got something that you can use for it to be that and help you to remember the Lord, then do it. And uh, for some of us that have kids that are there at the house, uh, where you're at. Amen. Make sure they understand the significance of communion. We're not, we're not just doing it to do it. We're doing it to celebrate what God has done, to remember what He's done, and then also to look forward to what He's going to do. And so go ahead. I'm going to give you a few moments here uh, in the preliminary uh, item. And during the message, you could uh, scrounge around in your cabinet, see what you could find. And uh, I've got uh, the, the, the Lord's Supper service here uh, already. And uh, April is a very important time of year for us. It's when we're going to celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. And of course, if you're saved, you ought to celebrate that every day of your life. And uh, But we're going to celebrate that through communion, just like we normally would if you were here in service with us that fifth Sunday night of the month, we would be celebrating this, uh, the communion of the Lord together. And uh, although we're not together, we are digitally. And so we're going to celebrate that tonight. Get ready for that, and let's see what God will do. Also tonight, amen, as uh, the service goes on, uh, I, would, I would really appreciate it if you could take some time. If you've got prayer requests, part of that communion service is believing in God to heal, believing in God to uh, uh, amend those that are broken. And, of course, we want to pray for those uh, that are suffering with this virus, uh, those that may be affected. We're going to pray for them tonight. But if you would this evening... Put it in the comments, a prayer request that you have. We will be praying, amen, over those needs tonight, specifically calling them out uh, one by one. And uh, so if you can, put that in there, and uh, we will make sure that we pray 
for each one of those needs. If you uh, aren't able to put it in the chat box, but you could text message it to me, uh, please go ahead and do so. Those of you that know my number, uh, go ahead and if you can't put it in the chat, that's obviously the preferred method. If you cannot, that's totally understandable. Go ahead and send me a text message. And uh, during that time of prayer, I will look through my phone and see uh, what messages of prayer that you have. We are going to believe God tonight. Amen. We're not just here to punch a ticket. We're not just here to say we did something. I believe we are here tonight to feel the power of God. Amen. I believe that we can feel the Lord tonight. And so let's start this evening by bowing our heads and let's pray and let's uh, ask God to move in this place this evening. Lord, we love you tonight, and I thank you for your goodness and for your power. Lord, I believe God. I believe God. And Lord, uh, even now as I'm standing here, Lord, I feel the Spirit of God upon me. I feel that anointing of the Lord in this house tonight. Uh, Lord, I pray that it would come down in each house, in each home, maybe in the car where they are. Let them feel that presence, that divine presence of the Holy One enter in tonight. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that we would feel that Holy Ghost speaking to us in these last days. Lord, we are doing all this to celebrate you. We're doing this tonight. We're having church tonight because we believe in the power of church. We believe in the power of prayer. We believe uh, in the ordinances of the church. Uh, God, this evening, we're going to reach out our hands, our hearts, uh, amen, to God this evening. We're going to ask you for your help. Uh, we're going to ask you, Lord, what we can do uh, as we reach out for you uh, and uh, believe you to do great things. Lord, I pray tonight, uh, amen, that the Spirit of God would be real. Lord, I ask, touch somebody through this service. Lord, we want to give you the glory and the honor and the praise for what you're going to do in this service in Jesus' name tonight, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, if you could this evening, if you would, I, I'm just curious tonight, those of you that are, are watching right now, you've, if you've got others that are there watching with you, could you just put the number of people that are watching uh, us right now with you, around you, in that chat box? Just tell us how many people are there, and uh, just out of curiosity, and uh, just looking to see how many people are with us tonight, and uh, I, I, I know God is up to something great. Didn't Brother Jared do a great job this morning. Hallelujah. Brother Jer did an outstanding job uh, in that connecting this all thing together and uh, at his house. And I think he had a great setup. I really do. And uh, I think it was outstanding, was uh, wonderful, really. And uh, so, Brother Jerry, great job, uh, great word of God for us, great challenge uh, to our hearts about Christ. If you've not seen that, go back and watch that video. Uh, it's posted there on our channel. You will uh, be impressed by that. Wow, what a great job. And uh, he's working tonight behind the scenes uh, doing some things pulling some stuff together uh, that you can't see. I can see him. I can see what he's doing. And uh, hi, Brother Jared. And uh, But he's working on that. Again, we've tried to make some of the other things so that you could see a little bit better so that everything wasn't blurry. Try to get it so the picture, uh, at least of me, was better. So we blurred some of the other stuff out. And uh, not sure we're going to be able to do that Thursday night. We'll see. But uh, we're working on it, trying to give you the best uh, quality. Amen. In the, the message and uh, through the Word of God and uh, for whoever may be watching going forward. All right. Uh, if you would this evening, let's look into the Word of God. I'm seeing some prayer requests come in there. That's great. That's exactly well, Thank you for uh, our responses and answers. I really do appreciate it. Uh, uh, thank you. It all helps us. And uh, really, you know, it's not... I want to get the message out. I want to get the Word of God out, as Brother Jared did so great uh, putting it in words this morning. I want to get that message out to those uh, that need God in their lives that will watch this. Maybe not now, but maybe later, and it'll be out there for them to watch later. And uh, only the Lord knows what will happen with all that. And uh, by you putting those comments in, by you uh, making uh, uh, typing in there, that helps all of us. Uh, YouTube doesn't recognize like we do, amen, but what it does is it will it will boost the numbers and YouTube will put it out there so people can find us uh, better without exactly typing in all the words, amen, and, and uh, I don't understand all that stuff I'm learning as we go, I can promise you that, amen, and uh, I want to do better for the Lord. Let's look in the Word of God if we can tonight. I want to go uh, to John chapter number three this evening, a very, very familiar place in the Word of God, uh, John chapter number three. And uh, uh, 
I want to look at a little subject here this evening to try to challenge us and to help us. And I don't know who uh, tonight or how many and where around the world people will listen to this, but I've, I believe God's got a word to encourage us and to help us uh, get closer to Him tonight. So if you've got your Bibles, uh, John chapter number 3, and uh, I want us to look here at verse number 14 tonight. John chapter number 3, verse number 14, we'll be reading down uh, to and through verse number 17 this evening. This is what the Word of God says. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Hallelujah. With the help of God tonight, I'd like to preach on this a little thought. Amen. Your help is on the hill. Your help is on the hill. Washington, D.C. is a work of art and really a layout of art that was done many years ago. And the originator or the designer of that Lafont, I believe his name was, uh, he designed it around where that Capitol would sit. And the Capitol building that is there in Washington, D.C., I've been there several times and some of you have as well, you'll notice that it's on a little bit of a rise. As a matter of fact, it is probably on the highest position in the immediate city there in, in the District of Columbia of Washington. Amen. The only thing that would be higher than that would be the area there where the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier across the river and up into Arlington. But as you know, people oft, often refer to the capital as the hill. And during times of crisis in a country, amen, what you'll find is they will, people will often turn to the hill and they will use that as a place that they will go to for their help. And uh, whether it's news media reports or different newspaper articles that are out there, they will talk about the decisions that are being made on the Hill. They'll talk about the debate on the Hill today, or they will mention uh, today on the Hill, our leaders have said this, and, and uh, they're often looking towards some kind of help or relief uh, We've heard that during this crisis that we are in right now, amen, our country is looking to those on the Hill to make the decision or those in the federal government that can provide the supplies or provide uh, the different uh, uh, respirators that may be needed. Uh, and they're turning to the Hill for their answers. Uh, amen. Uh, we've got governors that are sitting in their, uh, their buildings of uh, uh, their their capitals, their state capitals, and they're sitting there and they're referring to, we're looking for the Hill to give us more help uh, and more supplies and we need more masks and we need more of this. Uh, we've got people today and uh, that have lost their jobs that are looking to the Hill for answers to a stimulus check or they're looking to the Hill for uh, medical benefits or for testing facilities or, or what are we doing about beds and, and uh, this adjustment of the curve and you've heard these things uh, that have been mentioned in the media today. We've got business leaders, both small business and big business, uh, whether it would be the airlines or that small business in your towns, uh, uh, in the areas today that you live, uh, that they are looking for the hill for help, uh, for economic relief to keep their employees uh, getting those paychecks in and, and getting those monies that are needed, uh, amen, to keep their workforce going even when uh, the, the general public isn't allowed to come, uh, amen. They're looking for the hill, the hill, the hill, the hill, uh, amen. Tonight, uh, 
Amen. There is a verse in the Bible in uh, the book of Psalms, uh, chapter number 20 and verse number 7, uh, that refers to this. Uh, and it says, Some trust in chariots uh, and some in horses, uh, but we will remember the name of our Lord. Uh, amen. Tonight, I believe they're looking to the hill but they're looking to the wrong hill. Hallelujah. I, I believe tonight, uh, as, as we go through trying times uh, in our lives, we do need to look to the hill, uh, but we've got to look to the right hill. Uh, amen. There's a hill tonight that we've got to go to. Uh, amen. And I know that as we get closer to celebrating uh, a Resurrection Sunday, uh, amen, we look to Christ being a rose. Uh, amen. But a few days before that, uh, there was a cross. Uh, amen. On a hill called Calvary. Uh, amen. And tonight, uh, what we've got to do one more time uh, is look to the one uh, on that hill. Uh, I'm telling you tonight, there is help uh, on the hillside. Uh, I mean, I'm telling you tonight, uh, Amen. The help that we need can't be provided. Amen. By the hill in Washington. Amen. It's only provided by the hill on Calvary. It's provided by the one that hung on that old rugged cross for us. And so tonight there are some that trust in what a government system can do. There's some that trust uh, in what a company can do. There's some that trust, uh, amen, what uh, our local municipalities and governments uh, can do for us, uh, amen. But tonight, uh, I just wonder this evening, those of you that are saved, uh, if you could remember just a moment uh, some of the things uh, that my God has done for you. Uh, if you could just reminisce, uh, amen, we sing a song here, count your many blessings, uh, name them one by one. Uh, I just wonder tonight uh, if you could take a moment uh, and start to remember some of those times, uh, amen, in the name of the Lord, uh, amen, those times that God came by for you, uh, those times that uh, your help come from above, uh, amen, my help comes from the Lord tonight, uh, amen, I have been through some storms, uh, not just this storm, uh, but I remember there were times uh, in my life that I needed some help, uh, and I found that help on a hillside, uh, amen, I can remember a time time Amen. As a young pastor, uh, amen, down in Mount Olive, uh, amen, that little church, if you've ever been there, uh, you drive up quite the hillside, uh, amen, as it uh, uh, stands there, uh, amen, that little church against uh, the backdrop of the George Washington National Forest, uh, amen, all the way almost, uh, it seems like to the top uh, as you drive up to that little church. Uh, and I sat in one of the board meetings there, and one of the board members uh, was telling me, uh, amen, about uh, the benefit benefits of God. Amen. And he said, make sure that you get your benefits from the word of God. Hallelujah. Because your help comes amen from this book. Amen. And I found out in many ways on that little hillside. Amen. When I went through some issues, when I went through some storms in my life, amen, I found a place to pray on the hillside. Amen. And it was on that hillside uh, that I found the help that I needed. Uh, that God come by when nobody else was there. Amen. Uh, and I found out that my help was real. I remember other times in my life uh, as I had faced different issues that came along. It seemed like always there was a literal hill to match, amen, that spiritual mountain that I was on. At first, it seemed like a hard pull to get to the top. Uh, but it was when I finally got to the top, uh, amen, it was there that I found out, uh, amen, that my help come uh, from the Lord. Uh, amen. I, I, do you remember some of those times in your life uh, that you uh, were at that place uh, where you trusted in the name of the Lord? Uh, amen. I, I want you to go tonight, if you would. Amen. Uh, if you look quickly there, Psalm 103, verse number 2. Uh, Bless the Lord, O my soul, uh, and forget not all uh, His benefits. Uh, amen. Tonight, uh, amen, we've got to be careful this evening uh, that as we go through trials like we are tonight, uh, as we go through issues uh, like we are tonight, uh, that there's one thing we don't forget. Uh, amen. Who's got the benefits? Uh, who's got the blessings? Uh, amen. Who's got the power? Uh, 
Amen. Oh, there ought to be something coming out of our heart tonight that still says, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, and forget not all his benefits. Hey, can you remember some of those benefits that God brought your way? Amen. If you can tonight, throw that hand up in the air and bless the Lord with me tonight. Amen. Go ahead and worship God, church. Amen. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Hallelujah. When we move to the Word of God, to the book of Isaiah, chapter number 31, it's a very similar place in reference to that book of Psalms, chapter number 20 and verse number 7. Isaiah 31, go there tonight if you would. I want you to see this that is here, uh, this little nugget that the Lord kind of put into my heart. And Isaiah 31 and verse number 1, this is what the Bible says, Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Amen. When you go down to Egypt for help. Amen. Look at that right there. Amen. And stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong. Amen. Do you know some of those? Amen. That are going down to Egypt for help. Amen. Because it looks like they've got the resources to help you. Amen. What is it that you see down in Egypt tonight? Amen. That when you look down the road at all that Egypt has to offer. Amen. Do you see their horses? Amen. Can you see their chariots? Can you see? Amen. They're blessed. Can you see what they're getting blessed with? Can you look at their numbers? tonight. Uh, amen. Look at what Egypt's doing. Uh, look at what Egypt's got. To, uh, I believe I'll go down there uh, and see what they've got. Uh, hey, uh, whoa, the Bible says to those uh, that go down to Egypt. Uh, amen. Whoa to those uh, that are trusting in all that Egypt's got to offer. Uh, amen. I just want to give you a side note. Uh, it didn't work out so well for Egypt uh, when it came to God and God's people uh, and the Red Sea. Uh, amen. They went down into the water. Uh, but they never came out. Amen. Oh, whoa, tonight. Don't be one that trusts in Egypt. Because because Egypt won't always be there. Egypt won't always have the horsemen. Egypt won't always have the chariots. Egypt won't always be a world power. Amen. Oh, and woe to you tonight. If you're trusted in what the government can do. If you're trusted in, amen, our economic situation. If you're trusted in, amen, our economy tonight. Whoa. Amen. Hey, don't go down that road. Because it all won't always stand. It won't always be firm. It won't always be on the rock. Hey, what we need to do this evening is go to the hill. Amen. And get our help from above tonight. So as you look at this text, they trust in chariots because they are many and horsemen because they're very strong, but they look not unto the Holy One of Israel. Neither seek the Lord. Isn't that a testimony of where we are today? They're trusting in all of what our economy can do. They're trusting in all of what our government can do. They're trusting in what all, amen, the different programs the state's got to offer. Amen, that's all well and good tonight, I'm sure. Amen, but there's one thing that we've got to make sure that we trust in tonight. They look not not under the Holy One of Israel. Lord, in the middle of this storm tonight, in the middle of this battle tonight, would you do me a favor? Would you do yourself a favor? Would you seek the Lord? Amen. When was the last time that you talked to God in the middle of this crisis? When was the last time you had a discussion with the Lord in the middle of this battle? Amen. I don't care if it's in your vehicle, if it's in your house, if it's in your prayer closet tonight. Amen. Take some time and let's seek the Lord. Don't go down to Egypt. Don't see what Egypt's got to offer. Amen. Look at what God has to offer you tonight. Seek the Lord. Hallelujah. So look at this. This is why. So God gives you the why. I'm glad for the why. Hallelujah. 
Verse number three, look at this, if you've got your Bibles. Now the Egyptians are men <laughs> and not God. See, there's a big difference between men and God tonight. What a contrast that God puts here. Isaiah seeing the picture. He says, I see these men, but I see my God. Oh, and I'm talking about somebody who saw the Lord high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. I'm talking about Isaiah. Amen. Who saw the Lord. Amen. The year that King Uzziah died. Amen. He was high and lifted up. He was on the mountaintop. Amen. I'm talking about Isaiah getting a vision of Almighty God. Are you feeling what I'm feeling here tonight? Amen. I'm preaching tonight. There's help on the hillside. Amen. Isaiah saw the Lord high lifted up and his train filled the temple. And so no better person could make this statement. Amen. About men and God. Amen. I've seen men in verse number three, but I've also seen the Lord. Amen. How many of you tonight? Amen. You've seen men and you've seen what they can do. Amen. But have you taken a look at God? Brother Jared was preaching about that this morning. Amen. Take another look at Jesus. Take another look at what he's done. Take another look at what he's doing. Amen. Glory to God tonight. I said there's help on the hill for you. Hallelujah. So no better contrast could be made here from Isaiah. The Egyptians are men and not God. Their horses are flesh and not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that is hoping shall fall down, and they shall all fail together. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, tonight, if you're not looking to the right hill, amen, there is this, whoa, the Bible says, whoa, tonight, amen, hang on a second here, amen, T take pause here tonight, whoa, on this, amen, hang on, take another look at what you're aligning with, you're looking at men, you're looking at horses, you're looking at numbers tonight, amen, you're looking at power tonight, amen, you're not looking at it the same way that Isaiah did, who saw the Lord, he said they're going to fall together, they're going to fail together hallelujah but the Lord ain't done here go down to verse number four in this chapter verse number four in this chapter I like this so much <laughs> would you see this here about halfway down three quarters of the way down this verse so shall the Lord of hosts so shall the Lord of hosts come down to fight for Mount Zion and for the hill thereof. Get this picture in your mind tonight. There is Mount Zion. Amen. And the there is Egypt that is down below Mount Zion. Woe unto them that go down. They had to go down from Mount Zion. Amen. They had to go down from some place to get to Egypt. Amen. But here's the hill called Mount Zion. Amen. But tonight I want you to know this picture. Amen. There is one that is above the mount who's going to come down and fight on the mount. Amen. There's somebody that's above. Amen. The highest place where we are tonight. Amen. There's somebody tonight. Amen. His name is Jesus. It is the God of all the earth. Amen. It is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And the Bible says there's coming a day. Amen. When the help is going to come down to the hillside. Amen. Where we are. Hey, if we would climb up. Amen. On top of the mountain. Amen. Keep pressing on, church. Amen. Keep climbing higher with Jesus. Because when you get to the top, it may be a struggle getting there. But there's somebody who Who's coming down from above. Amen. To help you on the hill. Hallelujah. Trust in him tonight. In Genesis chapter number 22. Verse number 14 tonight tells us of a story. About a helper. And this helper tonight. Abraham is there. And he has gotten the biggest promise of his life. He has his son Isaac that God has given him. And I believe it's part of the greatest pain of Abraham's life as he goes up, amen, to that mountain. 
as he realizes that it's on this place uh, that God is going to, amen, uh, have to take his son, uh, amen, to prove uh, the faith of Abraham, uh, amen, and as all of this transpires, and you know the story, uh, amen, as Abraham binds the sacrifice, uh, amen, and they are about to, uh, amen, uh, 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 carry out the sentence here upon the promise, uh, amen, God, uh, amen, stops the hand, stays the hand. Uh, but we find, uh, amen, in verse number 14, uh, amen, after Abraham looks beyond uh, the initial sacrifice uh, and sees a ram caught into the thicket, uh, verse number 14 says this, Amen. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. <laughs> Woo! As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Amen. You know what that really means? Amen. The Lord shall provide. Amen. On the mountain. Amen. On this mountain, my God shall provide. I said, my God shall provide. Amen. Are you getting this tonight? Amen. I don't know where you are. I don't know how limited your resources are tonight. But I've been to the mountain. I said I've been to the mountain tonight. And I've seen the Lord. Amen. And I found out there's help on top of this hill for me. Jehovah Jireh. My God shall provide all your need according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. I wish you were here. We'd shout a hand time or two. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There's help on the hill tonight. My God shall provide. Amen. All your need. Woo! Jehovah Jireh. The sad part of it is not everybody wants you to be on the hill. As a matter of fact, Matthew chapter number 4 and verse number 8. Matthew 4 and verse number 8, this is what the Bible says. Uh, amen, let me, let me go over there. Amen, quickly. Hallelujah, I don't know if I got that marked here. Yeah, Matthew 4 and verse number 8. Not everybody's happy about you being on the hill. And you'll find out tonight. Amen, there's a lot of other hilltops. But it's not the same experience. There's a lot of other places there's a lot of other high places, but it's not the hilltop experience. Hey, man, as a matter of fact, God had many times uh, told the, the Israelites to tear down the high places uh, because high places, all they are is substitutes, uh, amen, for the mountaintop. Uh, amen, the, 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 the uh, high places uh, were places where the idols were. Uh, the, the high places were places, uh, amen, where, uh, amen, they would make sacrifices uh, to the satanic gods of the world. Uh, amen, uh, they would uh, make their idols and worship them. Uh, and God said, hey, uh, you need to tear these high places down uh, because they're substitutes uh, for the help on the hill that I got for these people. Uh, and so tonight, uh, amen, as you're listening here this evening, uh, if you got a high place. Uh, amen. It's time you tear that thing down uh, and put the mountain back where it needs to be tonight. Uh, and here we find uh, in this verse that is posted there. Uh, amen. Matthew 4 and verse number 8. Uh, the devil taketh him uh, up to an exceeding high mountain. Woo! Wow! The devil took me up high. The devil did this for me. Oh, when I served the devil, this is what happened. Oh, he took me. Man, what a thrill that was. Serving sin. Hey, I read the scripture. I know what it says. Amen. There is pleasure in sin. Amen. It's a good place. I say that because it's short-lived. Amen. Even if it's all your days. Amen. That high that the devil has to offer you. It's short-lived because eternity is a long time time. I said it's a long time tonight. Amen. Here this evening, the devil thought he'd take Jesus up to a high place and show them all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Look at all. Pleasures forevermore. Jesus said unto him, all these things, or he said unto him, Jesus, Satan said to Jesus, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship 
me. Hallelujah. Oh, everything, listen here. Everything you see, amen, I will give you. See, the reason why Jesus didn't buy this, amen, is because Jesus came from another level. Hallelujah. Amen. The reason why Jesus, amen, didn't buy what Satan had to offer, amen, is because Jesus had been at another level. Amen. And at that other level, he could see beyond what Satan offered. Amen. He could see further, amen, than what Satan had at the horizon level. Jesus could see beyond, uh, amen, beyond the horizon, uh, and he could see the things uh, that the devil didn't offer. Uh, he could see the things God could offer. Uh, he could see that the Lord, uh, amen, he had a cattle not on this hill, uh, but he had the cattle on a 999 uh, other hills. Uh, amen, God had all, uh, amen, that could ever be imagined, uh, all that could ever be, uh, he had that. Uh, amen, there was greater help uh, on the hillside uh, that could be had uh, than what the devil had to offer. I don't know what the devil's been offering you tonight, but I'm telling you, he ain't showing you everything. I don't know what he's offered. I don't know what he showed you. I don't know what he's laid out in front of you. But I'm telling you tonight, amen, you ain't seeing everything. You ain't seeing the whole story. Because just beyond, amen, that mountaintop of the devil tonight, amen, don't mind me. I'm just preaching here. Amen, don't mind me. Amen, I just feel the Lord here tonight. Amen, beyond what the devil has to offer you, there is a cliff. There is a highway that it leads straight to a place called hell. Amen. There is a path uh, that seemeth right uh, unto a man. Uh, amen. But the end thereof is destruction tonight. Uh, listen to what I'm uh, telling you. Uh, don't go down that road. Uh, get off that mountain that the devil's offering you. If you could see where Jesus brought me from to where I am today, then you'd know the reason why I love him so. Because I got off that hill. Oh, that hill that, devil, that the devil offered me. And I got on another hill. And I found out there was true help on this hillside. I found out that my God made a way. And I don't know what he's going to do for me tomorrow. But I've seen enough good for, for today and from yesterday to know I'm going to keep on going on. Hallelujah. And so this is what the devil has to offer. But the sad part of it is. If you go to the book of Luke, chapter number four, there are some people that don't like the message that I'm preaching tonight. See, Jesus is the only way. The only way you're going to get to heaven is to ask Jesus Christ into your heart. The only way you're going to get the help you really need, amen, is to ask the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart. Get down on your face and cry out to God. Ask Him to wash away your sins. Come into your heart and be Lord of all in your life to lead you, to guide you every day, to take you to wherever He has planned for your life. That is the only way you're going to get true help tonight. It's amazing to me, our country, as they've, they've taken great concerns over the mental health uh, of people that this crisis is is causing uh, amen and the answer to the mental health problem tonight uh, amen is just the same uh, as it was uh, for old legion uh, amen when god walked into his life uh, amen a man that was driven crazy uh, by the world uh, amen god took him out of that crazy state of mind uh, amen that ruined state of mind uh, that depressed and discouraged uh, that distraught state of mind uh, and it trans transformed him uh, into his right mind. If you're at wit's end tonight, amen, you need to get to this hill that I'm talking about this evening. There is a helper. There is a healer on this hill here tonight to help you. In the book of Luke 4 and verse number 29, not everybody realizes that the help that I have to offer through the word of God is help that they want. As a matter of fact, when you look at this, uh, amen, there was a lot of people that didn't like the message that Jesus was preaching. There was a lot of people that were discouraged, uh, amen, by the words, uh, amen, that were uh, uh, being spoken by God. Uh, 
And we'll get to those words here in just a minute. Uh, amen. But this is what the Bible says in verse number 29. Uh, and they rose up and thrust him out of the city uh, and led him unto the brow of the hill uh, whereon their city was built uh, that they might cast him down uh, headlong. Uh, amen. There's something wrong with people uh, when they don't want to even give Jesus a chance. There's something wrong tonight uh, when they don't even want to give the Lord, uh, amen, the time of day, uh, amen. But there's another problem uh, at a different level here tonight uh, when they want to take the only hope uh, for the rescue of their souls uh, and to push him out of their life, uh, amen. I just want to push him away. Uh, I just want to push him up this cliff, uh, amen. I just got to get this preacher. Uh, I just got to get this Sunday school teacher away from me. Uh, I just got to get, uh, amen, that crazy guy I work with uh, that all he wants to do is talk about the Lord. I just got to get him out of my life. I just want to push him off. Amen. I want you to know tonight what Jesus said that caused people, amen, to get so bent out of shape. He didn't preach the standards of holiness. We often hear people preach and get people all bent out of shape sideways. I want you to look at what Jesus said in Luke 4 and verse number 18. This is what caused them to lose their minds. Tonight, Jesus didn't come this evening. He's not preaching tonight to your heart to, to cause you to go crazy over uh, out of this world, do something completely dumb. That's not what Jesus came uh, to do. Uh, amen. As a matter of fact, he said he came to seek and to save uh, that which was lost. Uh, amen. But I want you to look at, at, at Luke 4, 18 and 19. Uh, amen. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me uh, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel uh, to the poor. Uh, he has sent me to heal uh, the brokenhearted, uh, to preach deliverance to the captives, uh, and the recovering of sight uh, to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised uh, to preach the acceptable year uh, of the Lord. Uh, amen. Tonight, uh, amen. Jesus came to the hill where you are, uh, amen, to be a healer. Uh, that Jesus came to the hill where you are uh, to be a helper tonight. Uh, are you captive? Uh, are you poor tonight? Uh, are, is your heart broken this evening? Uh, amen. That I've got the answer for you. Uh, there is a helper uh, on a hillside uh, that is here to help you uh, in his house tonight. Uh, if you would just reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. Hallelujah. You'll find he's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. He's passing by this moment your needs to supply. So reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. Don't push your helper off the hill. Don't push your healer out of your life tonight. Don't push the one that came to restore you, that came to revive you, that came to save you. Don't push him out of your life tonight. You need to pull him in. You need to climb to where he is and where he was, uh, amen, you need to get up on top of that hill uh, and ask him to come into your heart and into your life. The Bible talks about a place called Golgotha, also referred to as Calvary. Many preachers will refer to it as Mount Calvary. There's songs that refer to it as Mount Calvary. Uh, amen, but you'll, as you look through the Word of God, you'll, many point out in, in their commentaries uh, that it doesn't specifically say that it was a mountain. Uh, amen. But many of the writers of that day, uh, amen, the place of the skull was named that because uh, it was shaped as a skull. Uh, amen. They, and some of them had some other ideas behind it as well. Uh, but you'll find that many, 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 many uh, will point out, uh, maybe not necessarily in the text of the canon of Scripture, but they'll point out, uh, amen, that that was a mount. It was a hill uh, that Jesus was led up to. Uh, and I personally believe that it was. I've not been to the Holy Land to look at that place, uh, amen, or to see it for 
myself, but I believe that it was. Uh, amen. And as uh, Jesus was led that day, uh, after he had been beaten and battered and bruised, uh, after he had had his hair plucked out and pulled, uh, amen, after they had punched him and mocked him, uh, uh, he was led up that hill carrying his cross uh, until he was at the place that his body could not carry it anymore. Uh, and Simon was appointed, uh, amen, to carry it the rest of the way. Uh, but Jesus, as he went up that hill uh, of that day, uh, and they laid that cross down uh, on the ground and they laid his broken uh, and battered body on that old rugged cross. Uh, amen. As those soldiers began uh, to drive the nails. Uh, amen. As the song says in uh, uh, to his hands. Uh, as he drove those nails into his feet uh, and they lifted that cross up uh, and they placed it. Uh, amen. Into the ground. Uh, amen. And the body of Christ shuddered uh, and shook. Uh, amen. As it was laid there on the hillside. Uh, amen. I want you to know tonight. Uh, amen. We look at that and we think, oh, uh, what a horrible place to be. Uh, oh, uh, uh, what a trying place. Uh, how could he ever help me? Uh, amen. But in that moment uh, that he took his last breath, uh, he said those all familiar words. Uh, it uh, is finished. Amen. That day on the cross. Amen. Help was on the hillside. Amen. Down that cross was the blood of a sinless one that flowed down. Amen. When he said it is finished. Amen. It sealed your help on that hill that day. And all you've got to do is ask him into your life. Call upon the name of the Lord and thou shalt be saved tonight. You'll find there's a helper tonight. He is here to minister to your life. He's here to be the biggest blessing you've ever needed. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you tonight have experienced uh, the helper come by. Uh, some of you tonight uh, have experienced uh, that almighty power of God uh, that has come by uh, and been that help. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, all you need to do uh, is go to that cross. Uh, amen. All you've got to do uh, is look to the one on the hill. Uh, amen. As we start tonight, uh, amen. As Moses lifted up the serpent, uh, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Uh, if you and I uh, would go to that one on the hillside, you'll find. Uh, there's help there for you. It's rather simple. You just ask God into your heart and into your life. It's that simple. He made it that simple for a reason. You'll find that after you get past that mountain, there's many more to climb. But each one takes you to a greater place where he is. And each place is a greater blessing. Brother Jared, if you will tonight, hallelujah. My God is here to help you and to minister to you. He's here to come by and be a blessing to you. He's here to break the chains of sin in your life. He's here to tear down those high places that you've built to the wrong gods of this world. He's here to come down to the mountain where we are to offer us things that we can't even see. I'm telling you tonight, God loves you. God's here to minister to your life. If you would this evening, could you bow your heads and close your eyes? Pray with me if you would tonight. Lord, we love you tonight. Lord, I thank you for your goodness and blessings to our lives. Lord, I believe that you offer us such hope and such help. that We cannot even begin to understand all the things that you have to offer us. But Lord, I do know this. I want to get to the hill. Amen. To see what's there. Lord, I pray tonight if there are those that are listening to the sound of my voice that have not asked Jesus into their heart, I pray tonight that they would ask you in, ask you to forgive them of all their sins, put them on a new direction, on a new path, on a new course towards heaven, on a new path into the Word of God for their lives. I pray tonight in Jesus' name that you would turn them from sin, turn them to the helper on the hillside tonight. Lord, I ask you tonight, be real in their life. Let them feel that power of God. And Lord, I believe that as they make that prayer, they will feel that help that came from one that's higher than we are tonight. Lord, those of us that are going through the storm tonight, let us go back to that place where we remember the name of our Lord. 
Let us go back to that mountain of Jehovah Jireh in our life where we've seen the Lord provide. Let us go back to that mountain top uh, where the blessings that it seemed like we had, that it seemed like we lost them, uh, where we saw that God yet provided greater ones. Move tonight and restore faith and confidence in the people of God. Help them to press on and see the blessings of the Lord. I ask in Jesus' name tonight. Amen. <clears throat> and amen. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. If you have your Bibles with me tonight, I want us to move to the supper of the Lord here this evening. And uh, again, I'm looking for your prayer requests. If you have any prayer requests there, please put them there in the chat or send me a text message directly. I will look at those here in momentarily. <laughs> Praise God. Aren't you glad for what Jesus has done for us? Aren't you glad, those of us that are saved tonight, aren't you glad that Jesus saved you? Aren't you glad that he redeemed your soul? I'm in 1 Corinthians chapter number 11 tonight, and the all-familiar passage where we talk about communion in the Word of God. This is what the Bible says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I have delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Aren't you glad for what God has done in your life? Aren't you glad? How, if you're saved tonight, I mean, be honest with me here this evening. Aren't you glad that you're not living in sin this evening? Aren't you glad tonight you're not living as those that have no hope? I tell you, when I look at what God has done in my life, I am so blessed this evening to know that God reached down to where I was and He saved my soul. When you think about it, I think of why. Why did He pick me? There were many others He could have picked, but He reached down for me. I wonder why I say, said yes. I could have gone in many different directions. I'm glad tonight to know that God saved my life. Are you glad tonight that Jesus reached out and he saved your soul tonight? We are truly a blessed people and we have the right to rejoice because it's not in works of our righteousness. It's in his works. It's because of what he done. And tonight as we are separated and uh, this is probably the, the oddest communion that you've ever had, but it doesn't mean you can't celebrate what God has done in your life. It doesn't mean that you can't take this seriously tonight uh, and truly be thankful uh, for God uh, who could have just wiped us all out and started all over again uh, where he gave his only begotten son uh, to save our souls and die for us. I want to celebrate that tonight. I want to celebrate it with you. I want to bind with you tonight and celebrate. Celebrate the work of God on that cross. There's a help on the hill and more than just me tapping into that, I want to say thank you for that. More than me just taking advantage, I want to see what I can do to give back to that. I want to give honor to the helper tonight. And so we do that by communion. And we do that first by examining ourselves. Can we take a moment here tonight and examine our heart and ask God, Lord, if there's something inside of us, Lord, would you point it out? We're not asking you to point out somebody else's. Don't point over at your neighbor tonight. That's not what the Bible tells us. Let a man examine himself. Amen. Take a moment right here. Amen, Brother Jared, if you would. Maybe just make the music a little louder. I don't know how it is. Amen. But let's Let's just take a moment right here tonight uh, and can we just examine ourselves uh, amen before the face of God oh Lord uh, tonight uh, would you search our heart oh God, I, 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 I,
going to make sure that things between us are the way that they need to be. Oh, God, I pray tonight, Lord, search out my heart. Lord, David said, forgive me of my secret sins. Lord, I'm asking you tonight, cleanse me, purge me with his hip. Lord, I want to be yours. I want to be a child of God tonight. Reveal to me, Lord, help me to be what I need to be, Lord, my brothers and sisters tonight. Lord, I ask you, let them examine themselves tonight. Lord, and let the Spirit of God speak to us this evening in this place. Let the Spirit of God minister to us in this house tonight, I ask you. In the name of Jesus, Lord, minister to Lord, speak to our lives tonight. Show us, cleanse us, hurt us. I ask in Jesus, mighty name. Says here in verse number 23, the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Tonight, amen. I don't know what you have tonight. This evening, I have the communion wafer of the Lord, amen, the symbol of the body of Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad for the broken body of Jesus? Aren't you glad tonight, amen, that he was beaten and bruised for our healings. Amen. Aren't you glad tonight that it was by His stripes? We are healed tonight. I'm talking to you about this body of the Lord. It was broken and battered for you. Amen. I'm talking about in a crisis like we're in tonight. I'm talking about right here, right now. Amen. For such a time as this, my Lord was beaten and battered. Amen. He was bruised. Amen. Tonight, the stripes are for the healing of those that need God to move in their lives tonight. Can we give God thanks? Can we give God thanks for His body that was broken for us? Can you say thank you, Jesus, uh, for healing? Uh, have you been healed before? Can you give thanks to God uh, for that healing? Lord, uh, I thank you tonight. Uh, Lord, we bind our hearts together and we say thank you tonight uh, for that cross. Uh, thank you Lord for those stripes uh, that were put into your back time and time again. Uh, thank you God tonight. You did it for me. You did it for us tonight. Thank you Lord God. Thank you Jesus for that body that was battered for me. Lord there are many tonight that need this healing. There are many tonight that need this help. Lord, all across our land, all across our world tonight, our world needs a healer. Our world needs a helper, Lord. I want to tell them, I want to tell that world I know him tonight. God, just like you've healed me, just like you've healed my family, just like you've healed my friends, God, I'm asking you tonight, let the stripes of God be made manifest in this world one more time. In Jesus' name, I thank you. I thank you for the broken body of the Lord. As we partake together, let us celebrate and give thanks to God. Can we do that, church? Lord, we thank you tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I will bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Hallelujah. I will bless him tonight. Glory to the Lord. Glory to the Lord tonight. He is worthy. He is worthy tonight of all praise and glory and honor. Hallelujah. And I'm so glad for the body of the Lord that was broken. But the blessings of God did not stop with the body. Hallelujah. He goes on in verse number. He goes on in verse number 25. And after the same manner, he also took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Tonight, if you would, gather your fruit of the Lord. Join with me, if you would, tonight. Aren't you glad for the blood? Aren't you glad for the precious blood of Jesus Christ? We were sinners. 
We were on our way to hell. We were lost and undone. We were on a fast track straight to hell. But there was an old, rugged cross. And on that rugged cross was a Savior that was despised and rejected of man, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And all oh, that Savior had some blood that ran down. And I'm glad it touched me. I'm glad that precious blood of Jesus was applied to my heart. The Bible talks about that night. Amen. Back in Egypt, when the blood was applied to the door. And all that inside that heart, all that were inside that house, rather, they were saved. Amen. Of death that passed over. Amen. And tonight I'm glad to know the blood of Jesus Christ. It is still available for me. I'm glad tonight that the blood of Jesus has been applied to the doorpost of my heart. Amen. I'm glad tonight to know it'll still save sinners. It'll still wash me into free from the chains of darkness. It'll still set at liberty them that are bruised tonight. I'm talking about the precious blood of the sin. This one, he still loves you, he still can cleanse your heart. Tonight, if we could, can we give God thanks for the blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary for us? I know it was the blood. Oh Lord, I thank you tonight for the precious blood of Jesus. I thank you, God, tonight. Oh, it's just a symbol, but it's something I feel real inside of me tonight. I know I can feel the Spirit bearing witness in my heart. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood tonight. Thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. It makes a difference, and it'll still make a difference in those that need Him tonight. Hallelujah. Lord, where would we be had it not been for the blood? Where would we be uh, had it not been for the precious blood of Jesus uh, that flowed down to the vilest sinners uh, and it washed men and made it free? Uh, Amen tonight, Paul said. uh, Amen, he was the chiefest of sinners. Uh, Amen tonight, I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've done. Uh, Amen, you can never be the chiefest. Uh, There's already been one that's greater than where you've been. Uh, And that God uh, that saved the chief, uh, he can save anyone underneath of that. Uh, Hallelujah, I was in that crowd. Uh, Amen, I know what it's like to be set free by the blood of Jesus. Oh, aren't you glad for the blood tonight? Can we celebrate as we partake together? Amen. Can we celebrate and partake of the symbol of the blood of Jesus and then can we worship Him tonight? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God tonight, I worship you. Woo, glory to God tonight. Glory to God tonight, he is worthy. Woo, hallelujah, he is holy tonight. Thank God for the blood. Hallelujah, Lord, I love you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, God, for the blood. Can you worship him tonight, church? Hallelujah. Can you worship him tonight? Hallelujah. Let the world where you are here, amen, the worship of the saints of God. Glory. Hallelujah for the blood of Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb slain. Hallelujah. Thank God for the Redeemer. Thank God for the Deliverer. Thank God for my Helper. Thank God for my Savior tonight. I know it was the blood. Hallelujah. It washes. It washes. It cleanses. It purges. It sanctifies. Thank God for the blood. Hallelujah. Thank God for the blood. Hallelujah. I believe tonight that God has some great things in store. Amen. I'm looking back over any messages for prayer anybody with special prayer tonight amen if you've not done it amen if you'd enter that in amen quickly here 
Hey, hallelujah. Oh, my. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Looks like Luke needs prayer tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me just look in and see if I have anybody else. Amen. Brother Luke. We'll pray for him tonight. All right. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I want to do something else. I want to pray for uh, this need here with Luke here tonight. But I also want to do something else. Amen. I have the oil of the Lord. Amen. We're Pentecostal here tonight. Is that all right? Uh, amen. Just because I'm doing it online don't mean I can't be Pentecostal. Uh, I still believe in shaking the house. Uh, I'm still believe in shaking the house in prayer. Uh, I still believe in shaking the house with the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. I still believe. Uh, amen. In the healing. Uh, amen. I still believe. Uh, amen. In anointing the sick and praying for them. Uh, hallelujah. I've got here tonight. I know we can't come together. I know we can't be together. The Bible talks about those healing cloths that were used. And I've got several of them here. I've got five of them here is what I've got. And I'm going to lay them out here and I'm going to pray over each one of these. And if you would bind your heart with me tonight, I will anoint each one with oil. What I will do this week, if you need help or if you need a healing, Amen. I, I'm going to take them to the door of the church in a little bag. Amen. Each one in a different place, all five of these. Uh, if you need help or you need a healing or you want a, a God to move in your life tonight, uh, just stop by the church. Uh, grab one of those bags off. Uh, it'll have a little note attached to it. Uh, amen. Tell them what, it, what we did, how we prayed over it, and things like that. Uh, amen. And sealed inside will be uh, I mean, one of these little cloths that are there. They'll be in a little Ziploc bag. Uh, amen. Take to the door of the church. Uh, amen. And I believe God will do some great things through this. Uh, amen. If people say, what, what are those things hanging out there? Uh, our pastor prayed for those. Uh, anybody that needs one can stop by uh, and just take one off, take it home, uh, and he can't lay his hands on you. Uh, amen. He can't pray for you like we normally would in church. Uh, amen. But tonight, uh, we're going to believe God to meet needs. I don't know where these are going to go. Uh, I don't know where they're going to end up, uh, but I believe God will do some things. Can we pray together, church? Uh, I need to pray in church tonight. Uh, amen. Let's pray tonight for Luke. Lord, uh, in the name of Jesus, you see the need in this boy's life. God, I pray tonight, Lord, that the healing hand of God that we've been talking about, that the helper on the hillside would step on into his life. Let him feel right now. Break that fever, I pray. Lord, that sickness that is there in the name of Jesus, we ask that God bind it tonight. Bind it in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, break the sickness and let God receive the glory tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, tonight, we give you glory and honor for what you're going to do, Lord. I'm praying tonight uh, for each one of these cloths uh, that are here this evening. Uh, Lord, I'm anointing each one with oil. I don't know where they're going to go. Uh, I don't know who needs help or what. Uh, but I do know this. Uh, God, that you already know where they're going to go. Uh, you already know tonight who they're going to help. Uh, you already know tonight. Uh, amen. God's power is going to go with them. Uh, and I pray tonight in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, as we tack them up. Uh, God, I pray tonight uh, in your name that you would go with them uh, into the high ways into the byways tonight and I pray in the name of the Lord that you would overshadow them and let the Holy Ghost power and anointing of God that you talked about amen there in Luke 4 and 18 go with them Lord I pray and let those that touch them feel that anointing of God upon their lives Lord not that they turn to a cloth but they turn to the Savior Amen, it is over the cloth. It's just a symbol, just another way of showing there's one greater than us. There's one that's on another level than us. There's one that's on another mountain that's higher than I. Hallelujah, there's one, amen, who's bigger than me, bigger than my battle, bigger than my problem tonight. Lord, I thank you for what you're going to do, Lord, tonight. In Jesus' name, to God be the glory. Good things he hath done. Good things he hath done. Oh, have you had church tonight? Have you felt the Lord tonight? Have you felt the Spirit of God come by where you are tonight? I think one of the greatest dangers is that we get all dolled up and we have fancy presentations, but we miss the power of God. I said it before and I'll say it again. God did not call me to be an entertainer. Called me to be a preacher. And I, 
I've, I've done my best, the Lord knows that, to preach a message and try to help the saints of God. And I believe that God can still work great miracles even though we're not here now. We're coming back together. Hallelujah. We're going to join back together. We're gonna, one of these days, whether it's here or it's out there or it's in the air, we're coming together, aren't we? Amen. One of these days, I don't know when it's going to be, but I do know soon and very soon we're going to party together. We're going to have church together. We're going to celebrate together. We're going to rejoice in the Lord together. I know it tonight. Hallelujah. Here, there, in the air, to God be the glory. If you would this week, we have not had one email come in for anybody that wanted prayer requests or anything like that. We would appreciate it. If you would like to email us, let us know that you're out there, you're listening. One O N E dot gospel dot light at gmail.com. Brother Jared will post it there. Uh, one dot gospel dot light at gmail.com. That would be great if you could reach out to us. Thank you for commenting and chatting. I was watching those as we were preaching tonight. Amen. I just ags a preacher on whenever you say amen or type amen in there. Hallelujah. When you get back to your church, now that you, you've been broke in by doing the digital amen, just do it physically. Hallelujah. Say amen when the preacher's preaching. Hallelujah. You've already broke the ice. You've already done it. Praise God. Amen. Church, I'm praying for you tonight, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I'm for you. I believe God will help us through this time. If you need something, would you please reach out to me? Amen. I've been doing my best to try to reach out to uh, those as I can, whether it's text message or calling, uh, checking on them. I obviously can't go by. You don't want me to come by. You don't want me to possibly bring that virus into your house. Amen. And uh, let's pray that God will work until we meet again. Amen. God bless you tonight. Amen. We'll talk to you later.